Hey everybody, welcome to this week's Design Cinema. I'm Feng Zhu uh, speaking here. And uh, like I mentioned last week, I have a lot of work to do uh, for the next following weeks because of a major project I'm currently working on. So I'm going to keep these relatively short, but still provide you guys with some information. So this week, let's talk about setting up the Wacom tablet and Photoshop as a whole. Uh, you can see here, I have my Photoshop open. I'm also recording the entire screen, so you can see all the tools. And we'll just go step by step and cover a few uh, things that, which I think will help some of you guys, especially if you're starting out with digital painting and want to know how to set various things up. Um, but before I s start this, I do want to mention that there are basically infinite ways to do digital painting and there's infinite ways to do a setup. You have to do it, you have to basically set it up to suit your own working style. Uh, what I'm going to show you is my personal preference, but it does not mean that's what everybody uses. Uh, but this is something I find quite useful for myself. So you can, of course, try it. But if it, you find it uncomfortable or something doesn't uh, uh, you know, work the way you want, to then change it to the way that uh, makes it easy for you to work at the end of the day it's about converting this digital platform that you see here into something so comfortable that you can work without thinking that's digital um, so first let's talk about the Wacom tablet uh, let's make some notes here so I'll write some of this stuff down so this is all being recorded in uh, in real time so we're not going to speed this up obviously uh, so I could write some notes here right so I at home I mean, at work, which I'm here right now, I'm using a Wacom Intuos 3. At home, I use a Wacom number 4. The difference between the two, very minor. Uh, I actually prefer the 3, but uh, unfortunately, you can't find them in the market no more. But I actually like it 3 because the surface is much better. The 4, the one over here, tends to be quite slippery. And I'm talking about the, uh, the, the tablet, this surface right here, this surface. On the 4, is very slippery. And also the nibs, which is, uh, if you don't have a Wacom tablet yet, it's this little pen, and it's got this little tip. This on the four wears out extremely quick. I can actually wear it out in about one or two paintings. You'll be down to like about that big. Um, whereas on the three, I'm still using the same nib from probably earlier this year, and I've done tons of paintings on it already. So in that fact, it's much better. Um, the size of the Wacom, how big you want to get it, it's up to you. What I do is I generally like to. Uh, basically uh, regulated according to the screen uh, size. So at home, I have a 30 inch monitor that is running at 2560 by 1600. Because this res is so high, a small six by eight Wacom, right, which is the typical size, I think, which was eight, I think this is eight, this is by six. This is a little too small because this movement here is one to one, which I'll show you guys in a bit. So if I move my hand from here to here, it's gonna go across the page really fast because it's proportional, right? So for this, I used a nine by 12 size, which is a pretty comfortable, this is the medium size. There's one more, which I have as well, which is a 12 by 12, which is square. I don't think they even make this anymore. Um, but I still have one at home. It's a 12 by 12. Uh, I don't use this as, that much because the uh, 12 by 9 is wide screen, whereas 12 by 12 is a, it's a long screen. So if I even convert it back, it's still a 9 by 12, if you know what I'm talking about, because I don't use a vertical space. I use the Wacom proportionally to the screen. So on a 9 by 12, if I move my hand from here to here, it's a little bit slower in terms of the acceleration of the mouse cursor. Um, at work, I use a monitor that's um, a 27 inch, I believe, which has a slight different resolution. It's also 2560 by, uh, instead of 1600, it's 1440, I believe. Um, this one is an Apple Cinema. This one is a Dell. Uh, both are quite good, but if you really want a nice screen, one that shows colors off extremely well, then I recommend the Apple brand. Now, it's going to cost you a lot more than a PC monitor, but the color difference is, is completely different. Apple, for some reason, uses a much better technology on their screens, where uh, even this Dell is not as bad, but this Dell is not cheap. This 27-inch, this uh, I forgot how much the cost was, 1500 1600 I forgot what the cost was, but the Apple was about, when I paid for the 30-inch, it was about 3000 uh, US, so it's quite expensive, about double the price. Um, but the thing with the Apple screens, if you move your eye from here to here, it doesn't change the color. Whereas you notice on some PC screens, if you move your eye from here to here, up and down, like you raise your head, the color and the values actually change on the screen. And that's not good for digital painting because you can't tell which one's correct. Whereas the Apple, no matter what side I'm looking from this side, this side, whatever I'm looking at, it's a flat piece of image. It's almost like staring at a piece of paper. Um, nothing affects it. So I like that about the Apple screen. But again, you're gonna pay for it in terms of price. Um, so that's my kind of hardware setup. Let's talk about the PCs real quick before I get to the Wacom tablet. Um, so at, at home, I have a relatively strong PC. This is an Alienware here. I'm getting to pretty uh, big details here, Alienware. Right. 
I'm getting into details because I think that's the kind of questions you guys are asking. So if you find this a little too detailed, uh, hopefully you know, it doesn't confuse you or anything like that. But I think it's help helpful for you guys to know the exact specs. Um, I use a pretty powerful Alienware. This is about a 7K um, or $7,000 PC, very expensive. Um, it's an i960, I believe, or something like that, right? It's got a bunch of uh, 480 GTX uh, cards inside in the SLI format. It's got 12 gigs of RAM, right, at DDR3. Uh, what else is important? Windows, I'm writing terrible. Let me write a little better. Win Ultimate 64-bit. Uh, 64-bit is important. This is really important. Okay, the RAM is really important. Graphic card, not as important. A 480 GTX, you do not need it for Photoshop. Even something like a 295 or a 280, if you're using a PC, is fine. This is more for the games that I test out. Um, nine, this is important. So the CPU, lots of RAM. 64 bit this part is the most important because if you have a mac you don't have to worry about this but if you're using a pc you have to get the 64 bit version because photoshop by default if you're running, running a 32 bit system it's only going to use about three gigs of ram maximum that doesn't count for the system itself so if you have a uh, windows 32 bit system um, ps is probably only access about 1.5 gigs of that RAM, very small. Uh, when you do a big painting, it's going to eat up a lot more than 1.5 gigs. So you need a 64-bit, therefore it could use however much RAM you put in. So generally when I have a painting here, I have about 8 gigs. Uh, in Photoshop, you can see it right down the bottom. If I show the status, you'll see here. Uh, where is it? I generally don't show that. Here we go, status bar. Uh, you can see it right down here. It says 1.4 of 1.7 gigs. That's the scratch disk for this size. Uh, but you can actually change it to, for example, uh, efficiency, 100%. You can change the document size, tells you everything you need. So for me, I have plenty of RAM, about usually about 8 gigs free uh, for Photoshop, which uh, is basically plenty. Uh, so that's the home machine that I used to do a lot of my bigger paintings. At work, the current one I'm recording Camtasia on is a laptop. All right. I like to draw everything out, makes explaining things much easier. Uh, this is a Dell. Uh, the exact model is a 6400M. This is probably one of the most powerful workstation uh, laptops that came out last year. So also not very cheap. This one about, I think, 2500 to 3000 range when I bought it. Yeah, so not cheap. This one, again, is about 7K here for this PC, this one this much. But you need the processing power. The reason why this one ha is good because it has the NVIDIA 37M. This video card is very, very fast. It's got one gigs of uh, video RAM on it. So in fact, this, this laptop could play most games uh, fully fast at the very high resolutions. And it's a 1920 by 1200 screen, which is very good for a 17 inch laptop. So that's the hardware I use for most of my work here. Um, I used to use Apple's as well. It's completely up to you. you know, Apple's actually make things a little bit easier if you use it because it's already 64 bit. Um, you could get Photoshop, it's already using all the RAM. The only downside to Apple product is that it costs m way more than the PC. The equivalent of something like this uh, on an Apple probably costs about $10,000 or more, uh, depending on what you want to put into it. So because the, because of the expensive video cards and all those sort of things. Uh, laptop, same thing. The equivalent of this laptop on, a, on an Apple probably costs you somewhere around thirty-five dollars uh, to maybe 4000 range uh, for the equivalent uh, hardware. So again, it's up to you. Uh, the hardware actually doesn't really matter. Uh, so these are two hardware, and then I use the medium 9 by 12 Wacom Tablet 3 at work, 4 at home. Okay, so that should cover the uh, the hardware aspects for those of you who are in the market to shop for a new PC. Okay, and the second thing is all these things depreciate extremely fast. I'm sure my PC now is worth like a thousand dollars or something like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Because as soon as you buy it, everything drops. I think right now the 580 GTS just came out. That makes that makes my 480s uh, completely uh, drop in price. But okay, so let's go to the Wacom setup. Let's go to control panel. Okay, when you install the Wacom, it comes with a little driver, obviously, if you click it. Now, this is very basic stuff, but some people actually don't have this set up. Uh, you'll see it has something called mapping. This is critical because you want to force the proportions here. You see that? So here you can see here I have two screens being used. Uh, I'm only mapping it to monitor number one. I have another one. Laptop, uh, my laptop is actually monitor number two. So monitor one is mapped and forced proportion because if you don't force the proportions, what's going to happen is it's going to try to use the square Wacom to match the widescreen format, especially if you have a wide screen like this. And it's going to make drawing very, very awkward. Even right now, if I move my mouse, it just doesn't feel right at all. So as soon as I click this on, now it's back to normal. So you are sort of wasting the bottom uh, 
uh, strand here of this Wacom tablet. So I, I do believe the Wacom's 4s are actually widescreen formatted, so you're not wasting the space of the tablet. Uh, but again, it doesn't really matter. It's a very small strip that I'm not using. Uh, so that's the basic. Everything else I leave default. I don't touch any of this stuff. I think it's fine. Um, Personal preference wise, I turn all these off. I don't really use these at all. These kind of tool tip things, I have no idea what they do. I, I don't use them. I, I, I use the keyboard instead. So I really don't care about those things at all. So the only thing to do is the um, uh, mapping and that's it. All these things are defaulted. The pressure, sensitivity, it's all default. Yeah. Okay. So let's go into Photoshop now. Let's close this one, which is the hardware. Let's talk about brush setups. Okay. Checking my time here to make sure we don't run too too far. Okay, so this is my brush set here. You can see the top row here, these two rows, one and two, are all default, actually three as well. They're all default brushes, the custom brushes down here. To teach yourself Photoshop, I think the one, the best way to do it is to learn how to use default brush. But something I do turn off, which is the um, pressure sensitivity. So if I open my brush settings, you can see, this is Photoshop CS1, by the way, a very old version of Photoshop. The one I use at home is Photoshop CS5, uh, so, but this menu looks pretty much the same. Now you notice here, Smoothing always turn this on and just lock it. Okay, it's gonna prevent the little bands that show up like that. If I turn this off and draw this, you see that. If I zoom in, you'll see it makes little kind of ratchets. If I turn this on, it gets rid of them. It kind of applies a mathematical formula to even out the uh, resolution of the Wacom tablet. Because even no matter how high the resolution is, it's not gonna pick up every single fine re uh, moment, right? Well, especially when we move fast. So smoothing basically just smooths that out. So see if I move fast right now, it's chiseled. Right, this edge is not as smooth as that one. So it's just some kind of code, error code that Wacom tried to fix, uh, or Photoshop tried to fix, okay? Um, here, uh, on the other dynamics, I have flow jitter turned on. This is also on by default. So this allows you to, if you press lightly, it's very thin, press hard, it's thicker line, that's all, okay? But here, everything else is off. In shade dynamics, I have this off, which is the uh, opacity, actually, I think it's in this one here. Opacity in the other dynamics is off. By default, it's on. Now, the reason why I turn it off is very simple. And I'll show it to you in a painting. I learned painting from the traditional ways of doing it on gouache, <clears throat> which is a traditional medium. And in traditional medium, if I mix the color, for example, if I mix red like this, right, and I want this red to go a little bit darker, well, what I could do is I could throw in a little bit of gray and make the red turn like this. So when I apply the canvas, I get this, right? If I want to make it lighter, I can mix a little bit of white, a little bit of light gray, or just white into the tube and I'll end up with some value that looks like this, right? So if this is cadmium orange, by default, it'll probably look like this, right? This is default cadmium orange. Mix some black, I get this. Mix more black, I get that. But notice as I put these values down, it's 100% the color I mixed. But in digital, it allows you to kind of cheat. It, it could do something that you can never do in traditional medium, especially with something like gouache or, or oil. You can't do this, which is have the opacity on which I think I have on for this brush. One of these I have it on. Let's just turn this on. I guess I'm turning opacity on now. So imagine I have this red, this cameo orange, for example, right? Not red, orange. And I press lightly. See, I get a very light orange. I press very heavy, I get the original, the original color to come out. You see that? Or if I press medium, I get this. Now, with a traditional brush, I cannot do this because the color that I mix is always going to be this color. So if I choose the same color, put back my regular brush with opacity off, you can see if I paint lightly, I get a light version, I mean, smaller brush size, but same color. If I press hard, I get this. If I press medium, I get the same. And this is exactly how real paint behaves. Real paint cannot do this. With watercolor, you could achieve something similar, but with brushes, because the reason is because you have the tip of the brush like this, right? In a real brush, the paint is right here. How hard or how soft you press is not gonna change the value of this paint. And that is critical because value is what painting is all about. I'll write it right here, value, right? The intensity, the black and white level. In traditional painting, we adjust the values which all colors have, right? If I turn this to black and white, you'll see it has different values. Notice here, the three values here, are exactly the same because we did not change it. Look here, the same color res uh, resulted in three different values. You got dark, you have medium, you have light, just by changing the pressure of the pen. Here, no matter how I press, the value is the same. So this basically allows me to control the value by understanding value. This could result in a value uh, change that's unintentional. And for someone who's learning, this could actually make your painting look very, very muddy. And I'll use another example to show you what that means. 
right? As you know, values transforms in black and white if we have something like a cube, right? And let me just lasso out a little cube here. 